Is someone here? Yes, I can feel it. Come out. I mean, you know how. You. Come here, my sweet. Let me look at you. Why, oh, you're so beautiful. And tell me, why do you come here? <laughs> you wanted to use a spirit board. Ah, oh, you didn't think it would work. And why would it? It's merely bits of wooden glass. No, you do not need to summon me. <laughs> I'm always here. Hmm. Well, perhaps it is that I was waiting for you. And if not you, someone to come to this place. Were you hoping to reach me? Or were you searching for another? <laughs> ah, so you do come for me. It has been so many years since I had a caller, and they're never quite so lovely as yourself. Pardon, I forget myself. My name is Elizabeth Good, and I am the lady of this manor. Or was, I suppose. <laughs> Even after all these seasons gone, it's still so easy to forget. How did I die? That's quite an unfortunate story. I'm not terribly sure you want to hear it. Very well. But before I unburden myself on you, I would like to hear who you are. What drives this gorgeous woman to a desolate place such as this? Deep in the forest and long forgotten, at least by those in the mortal realm? Or so I thought. Hmm, a curious soul, I see. <laughs> so you heard tales of the haunted manse in the woods and thought you'd prove yourself as brave and courageous as any man in your village. How wonderful. And on the night of all hollows to boot. I applaud an enterprising spirit such as yours. When I ask, how did you find this place? Ah, oh, you heard my music. Yes, I do play the piano at times when I am able to muster the strength. It's very out of tune, having been left untouched for so long, and I haven't the ability to tune it myself. Not quite yet. What do I mean? Let me explain. As best I can determine, I, as other ghosts that occupy the plane in between realms, are made up of some kind of energy. I'm not sure of it, not really. It's more of a feeling I have. Well, being a spirit as I am, I cannot touch most things. Corporeal things, at least. But this energy... I found that, as the years passed, I learned to focus it, harness it for brief periods of time to touch and interact with things in the world of the living, but with much more difficulty than if I were actually alive, I'm afraid. Would you like me to show you, dear heart? Don't worry, I cannot harm you. Thank you. Yes. Mmm, so beautiful and kind. Mmm, such a sweet face. What gentle eyes you have. Mmm, let me run my fingers along your hair. Mmm. See? So soft. So lovely. It has been forever since I felt the touch of another person. <laughs> Even if it is just your follicles. Thank you. Thank you for that. It was remarkable. Yes, I can do other things than play piano and brush your hair. But let's talk about that in a moment. You must know of me, if you came here seeking me out. What have you heard? <laughs> Is that the tale my parents told upon my passing? A tragic accident. <laughs> How surprising that even after they've been dead and gone for so long that this still comes as a disappointment as I must have been for them. Oh, 
No, nothing you can help with, darling girl. Just a long, forgotten tragedy. Only an accident, as if it ever were. Love, back then, you see. It was only to be between a woman and her betrothed, and even then rarely could you choose with whom, and never if you were as wealthy as I. And certainly never with another woman. I am sorry. I hope I do not shock you. My parents couldn't bear it. They shuttered me away in this place, holding me prisoner until my wedding night, when they said my groom would cure me of my illness. I hung myself, of course. I think they knew it would come to that. I think they didn't really care. The day they caught me with my handmaid was the day their daughter died for them. And I've died many times over since. I wonder if that's why I remain here. Trapped in my own prison now. Waiting for the love and acceptance that will never come. Do not cry, my dear. I'm sorry, I don't mean to sadden you. You've brought me such joy by coming to visit. There, see? Brighten that beautiful smile, lovely girl. So beguiling. In those eyes. Oh, yes, but before, I was going to show you some of my tricks. The things I can do with spirit energy. Would you care to sit? I would like to fetch you a drink, if I'm able. Would that do? Hmm, good. I'm afraid all we have is tea, and it is <laughs> fairly atrocious, I'm sure. If I could taste it, I would be horrified, but as it stands, can you pretend to bear it? <laughs> Thank you. Let me light a fire, and I will prepare it for you. Do you see how I lift this cup? <laughs> I learned to do it only recently. Isn't that amazing? Mm. I'm afraid we don't have any sugar. Perhaps some honey. Mm, you will have to check the pantry. I'm afraid it takes all of my strength just to do this. No. Ah, <laughs> oh, well. My apologies. Offering a guest old tea leaves without sugar or cream to drown it out. My mother's head would spin. <laughs> Let me get the strainer. I'm afraid I haven't mastered this, but hopefully it isn't too dreadful. Ah, there. Quick, take the cap before my energy fades. <laughs> Fantastic. I knew I could do it. Well, give it a drink. Don't leave me in suspense. <laughs> I warned you, it would be atrocious. And well, how about this? You finish that horrible cup of tea to spare my ego. <laughs> and I will find you something truly special. Do we have a deal? <laughs> I would shake on it if I weren't so drained. All right. But I have to see you drink the whole thing, you know. <laughs> oh, that was fast. You must have a taste for masochism. And now I will hold up my end of the bargain. Give me just a moment. Here it is. Oh, not just a necklace, sweet. It's a locket. It's the locket. The one I was going to give my darling before I was taken from her. My family never found it, hid it very well. And so it stayed here with me, a constant reminder of the love I could never have. Do you like it? I want you to have it. And don't say no, my love. There's nothing to fear. No one can stop us now. I know it. I can see it in your eyes. You feel the same as I do. Love. Deep and wonderful love. And wanting. 
Are you feeling ill, my darling? I won't be long now. You will suffer, I know it. Cyanide does not kill kindly. It was there too, all this time, hidden away inside that locket, the poison that set me free and trapped me all the same. So you understand, dear heart. I, I told you that I hanged, but that was not the truth. It seems so ugly to say, but I have done it again now, to you. And not to hurt you, sweet, wonderful woman, beautiful, glorious, radiant creature, not ever to hurt you. In truth, I am saving us both. If you were not here with me, I would haunt this place until the end of days. And if you were to leave here without me, your love, you might suffer the same fate as I. It's a fate worse than death. Luminous girl, I would never let you go through that. Please, oh please, I see your pain. No, shh, shh, shh sweet. Mm. Calm now. I will be here, right beside you, through it all, and I will be waiting on the other side, to embrace you once again. Oh, hush now. It will only last a short while longer. I love you, my darling, and I will love you in this plane, and in the next, forever. <laughs>